I just got in from I just got in from spraying my fruit trees for the second time this year. Second time this year, spraying my fruit trees. Yes. I just don't want my fruit being eaten up by bugs as soon as it's produced by the tree this year. So there it is. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? Nice. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Nice tag picture there. Very good. And uh, <clears throat> I'm just here talking about my fruit trees. Um, they're doing quite well. They are. They are ready to start blossoming, and I'm, I'm happy about that. I uh, got a chance to look at my, come through the winter and looked at my uh, blackberry bush, and they're doing quite well, so I'm happy. Are you by any chance growing anything this year? I am growing as much as I possibly can. Watermelon. It's going to be a big part of my garden. And um, <coughs> in time, okay, I think you're asking me, are there any new trees this year? I haven't did anything because i haven't found anything i'm interested in now if i did anything i keep thinking about the um the pomegranate but my understanding is if uh if you have good soil i have pretty good soil they get big my point is they get big they get 10 feet across they get 10 15 feet or taller uh upwards and in order to control this this plant you're going to do a lot of pruning uh, you're going to do a lot of pruning because it's just going to get massive. It's going to be, uh, it's going to grow like a bush. So that is something I had to think about. Um, then there was one other. What's a good fertilizer for pears and peaches? I got to be honest with you. Um, People buy different fertilizers depending on what they want to do. If you want to grow more blossoms, then you get uh, fertilizer that are very high in certain, um, uh, certain you know, minerals. You get, uh, and then you have another fertilizer like, but I would never, here's what I would never do. This is just me. Uh, I would never buy and put man-made fertilizers around my fruit trees. But if I had a pear tree, I could use, um, on organic fertilizer. How many pear trees do you have? I like to consider that because you got to look at cost too. So if you had like, I have, I think I have 25 trees. So that's, uh, that's a bit costly if you're going to use bags of um, fertilizer from, um, God, what do they call it? Bags of fertilizer from the store. If you're going to use organic fertilizer, they're like eleven and twelve dollars a bag. Uh, I don't want to do that for trees. Now, if um, I had more than one tree, I could use a compost around the base of the tree. That would work just fine. Um, and uh, compost is it will feed the tree upwards to. Uh, a, f a few months, you know, like you're talking about over three months, it'll feed the tree depending on how much you put down. I would put about four inches deep all the way around the um, the, uh, the 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 the, mm, the grow line where the tree's the longest branch. I will put them down around. Good morning, good morning. But uh, yeah, um, I would I would use compost. I would use compost. Um. Fruit trees should be fed. It, it, like right now, today it's about uh, forty-seven degrees, probably, and which means it's warming up here. My buds on my trees are starting to swell. Once those buds start swelling, I would say 
I'm giving it a feed my tree. That way, uh, once they pop open, uh, they get a steady feed of, uh, of fertilizer. All right, only garden and crew. Pear trees, I have two. Well, actually, I have three. Um, I have uh, what they call the delicious that was purchased at uh, Stock Burrows. It's one of their favorite trees that made me order it, you know, when I saw that. And I said, okay. And then I ordered uh, um, a tree for years ago online. It was a, it was supposed to be a Bartlett. Oh, the, the pear from that is absolutely incredible. They're absolutely incredible. It doesn't make, make any sense they're that good. Uh, but I had a tree that it was crossing with uh, that wasn't a true pear tree. It was like an ornamental pear tree. They sent me the wrong one. But it was enough for the tree to cross with. So once I found out it was the wrong one, it kept growing all these beautiful blossoms and it was producing these tiny pieces of fruit that you couldn't eat. Um, I cut the tree down. Yes, I did. I cut it down because I was ticked off because three years it took it to get it to that point and discover that it's 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 just you can't eat it. Now, uh, so I put the delicious next to it, and I put another one ten feet across from it. It's called a um, what is that tree called again? It's called a uh, Duchess. I think it's a Duchess pear. And uh, that is a very young tree, so it was put in about two years ago. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the only reason why I do that with a, with a hole uh, in the, in the uh, soil is because of this. Let's say you 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 buy a house. Now my house is a pretty my house is an older house. But let's say you buy a house 25, 15, maybe even 50 years old. So when they build a house, they scrape off all the top soil, scrape that stuff away, and they take it out somewhere and sell it or, or dump it or whatever. And then they leave the subsoil there, which is a, like a clay material. So they do some surveys and discover, is this, is this kind of soil that'll hold up a house? And then they say, okay, it is. And so, so they build a foundation they start building the property up and then they put down this uh sheeted uh um, grass you know they come you roll them out and whatever or you could use the uh grass uh seed and you could put straw over top of it until it starts to germinate and, and mature into grass here's the problem with that what nature put there originally is gone forever so you move in there and you see a little bit of black soil on top because you figured, oh, this is good soil. And it's not because all you're seeing is a small amount of compost created from the grass <coughs> and a few trees in the yard. I mean, a few trees in the, on the, in the area that's been dropping leaves over a period of time. That's what it's been doing. So you figure, I, I could dig and grow me a garden here. Problem is, you're trying to grow it in clay soil. So you dig, you dig in the ground or you till it up or whatever and you, you put in all your money, which is your, your fertilizers and your seeds and everything. And then you realize that for the first year, everything grew kind of okay. Second year, and each year that you try to grow something, the soil gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker until eventually they won't grow anything. Now, the deal is when you have that kind of soil, is to bring in a bunch of organic matter and organic matter you have to use it, the, the, those words a lot organic matter but as simple as this is dead vegetation or dead uh uh life that once was alive it's dead it's dead now when you put that out on the soil whether it be wood chips or whether it be uh leaves or whether it be a uh, straw or whatever it may be the biology that's left in that soil will break down the the um what i'm trying to say here folks i'm trying to say to break down the uh the, the wood chips and it will create a compost on top it will create it now the soil starting to come back to life now you can grow some stuff there 
And as you keep working with your soil, and especially if you do not, I repeat, if you do not till the soil, your soil will get better. But if you till it every year, it's going to get worse. And how does he know this from experience? Absolute experience. Now, you have put in some fruit trees. Fruit trees are going to improve the soil. They're going to improve the soil. Trees, period. Now, you got your garden out there and you're putting in your vegetables and then your vegetables are doing quite well. But every year you got to remember one thing. And <coughs> excuse me, add organic matter to that soil to keep improving it. It's like um, if you keep this one thing in mind, you're growing soil and you're not growing plants, you're growing soil. And that's your whole thing is to have that soil better off than it was when you first came in. That soil will get better if you keep adding organic matter to it. I used to go out and get big uh, bags of leaves from my neighbors. One year, a neighbor threw out uh, 40 bags, and I wouldn't got all of them. I wouldn't got all of them. I was working, but I shouldn't have did that because it was at night, you know, and, and a man walking through your uh, street at night, that's not a good thing. That makes sense. All right. Because once you once you add the leaves, the leaves are filled with nutrients and minerals from deep in the soil. As the root goes down on a tree, that tap root brings up all those minerals and, 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 and uh, it brings them up and it goes through the trunk and into the branches and into the leaves. At the end of the year, it cycles back down, it drops it on the ground and the biology eats it and it excretes it and the trees drink and the nutrients from the biology the biology in turn uh in a sense returns that back to the tree and it keeps repeating this circle over and over again for hundreds and millions of years that's what it does anything that was once alive goes back to the ground i don't care what it is um let's see most of uh, my yarn uh, is clay and uh, okay most soil on the planet is clay most soil on the planet is clay and clay it has a very uh it's filled with uh, uh nutrients but doesn't drain well and these are uh, punk plants punk plants that we have that's what they are they were created by man when you buy the seeds in the store those were those were pretty much created or or, 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 or to to basically like corn for instance corn of uh, uh, thousands of years wasn't like it is now it wasn't it was nowhere the size uh as it is now uh broccoli wasn't the same um oh, come on i think of another one here uh it's a it, it's a number of plants that just weren't the same they they now are the, uh uh they don't have the they've been grown and produced to grow in the finest soil and that's how they produce these plants to grow in the best soil possible and you don't have that soil no one really has that soil so what they do is your plants won't do like weeds will. Weeds will grow in anything. Weeds will grow in a crack, in a dark alley that no one cares for, and that weed will still grow. As long as that seed wound, wound up there, it will grow. Uh, all it needs is just this, that much dirt, or soil, excuse me, around it, and it will grow. Your plants that you're planting, whether it be cucumbers or tomatoes or whatever, they won't do that. They don't have the ability to do that. They're not strong enough to do that. So clay soil is so dense that roots find it difficult to move through clay soil. I didn't say they wouldn't go through clay soil, but they find it very difficult. So that's why a lot of times when you grow plants, they don't grow like you think they should. You think, okay, you put the seeds in the ground, and you've seen the package, you've seen all the beautiful flowers and, 
and you see the beautiful um, uh, tomatoes and cucumbers on the packs. Well, guess what? The people who created those plants knew exactly what they were doing. There's no guesswork in it. They know you need loose soil. They know that. You need soil that is moist. They know that. You need soil that is warm. And you need soil that will allow, and this is very important that people don't pay uh, enough attention to, is that they don't they don't understand that this 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 they know that it needs water, it needs sunlight, it needs warmth, but it needs oxygen. And if you have heavy clay soil that you pack around that plant, that plant will grow and it'll grow uh, enough to stay alive, basically. And you'll get some tomatoes on the on the vine. You'll get some, you know, you'll get some. But imagine if you could get that soil open up and allow for oxygen to come through, to allow for it to stay somewhat moist even on the hottest days. Imagine that, folks. Imagine uh, if you're taking the soil and mulching around it that plant, mulching around that plant to keep that soil from cooking in the hot summer days. All right, keeping the ground covered is important. And if you can keep that ground covered where when it rains, the, the, the water stays right there with that plant for days, even after the rain has been gone for two or three days, it's still moisture there. Food supply that that plant needs, what needs to be in that soil is there. Your plant will do nothing but grow. Your biggest problem, your biggest problem would be what am I going to do with all these cucumbers and what I'm going to do with all these tomatoes and what I'm going to do with all this okra and what I'm going to do with all these huge watermelons? What am I going to do with all that? And that's what you will be wondering. Because the plants will respond if they have the environment that is necessary for them to do that. But if you do what you do each year, if you pick that soil up and that soil is heavy and it, 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 it's, uh, it, it, when you feel it in your hand, you mash it and squeeze it, and it turns into a little ball and you poke it in, it won't poke away, it won't fall apart when you do that, guess what? You got clay soil and you need to amend it first before uh, you actually start putting those uh, seedlings or seeds in that soil. I do it every year, folks have been doing it for 19 years. Uh, I don't claim to know it all, but what I've learned is that uh, each year we go out, we're very excited, and we're all fired up, and then we get disappointed about a couple of weeks into the game after we put the seeds in the ground over the seedlings. And then we see stuff growing what? Slowly. That's what it does. And it makes you go, oh, come on. So you start panicking, and you start adding more water, and you start adding more fertilizer. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's concentrate on the soil, and you, you'll get much better at it. Okay, I'm looking at this right here. What do you do to keep them at bay? I think you're referring to something. I don't know what that is. Um, me too. No, 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 no. Okay, that might be something else I'm misunderstanding here. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh -huh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's now, the, the only thing I'm saying is, is that um, let me give you a guideline that, that might help you out. It might help you out immensely when it can cause you to leap years ahead of what your skill level might be right now. This year, if you if you write this down, it will help you out immensely. Um, you're going to dig a hole anywhere from six to eight inches deep. You want to make sure that hole is approximately a foot and a half wide. You said, wait a minute, that's a big hole. Yeah, but trust me. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you're welcome anytime. Anytime. I think you're talking to me. I think for someone. I don't want to be taking credit for someone else there. Um, but you want to dig a hole, as I said earlier, uh, about six to eight inches deep. And you want to remove the soil from the hole. 
Thick of all. And in and if I'm talking about clay soil, I'm talking about heavy, nasty clay soil <clears throat> that when it rains and then when it dries as hard as a rock and it's just crap. Um uh what you want to do is take that soil out. If, if, you, if you have a tarp, it'd be easy to work with. Put it on the tarp, mix in your compost into it. And you want to do like a 40, 60 percent mix. 60 percent compost, 40 percent of your native soil. Then if you want to really get fancy, you could, you could even put perlite in there. You could put uh, and, and it, it's no exact measurement. All you're going to do is use your hands. Your hands are your tools. You could mix this stuff up and you're going to mix it up. And once it's loose and pliable and you squeeze it in your hand, you open it up and you poke it and it falls apart, you say, okay, that's good. Uh, you add the, uh, and get your, um, your pearl like from our stores like, uh, uh, I, I go to Home Depot because they sell a big bag. I like the big bag because I, I, I know I have enough. So um, my scoop container is going to be a five inch flower pot, plastic flower pot. Because it's going, each scoop is going to pretty much be enough. And you put it in there, and you mix it all up, mix it all up, mix it all up. Now, uh, you mix it up. Now, what I use is I go a little bit crazy with it. I go a little bit of compost, a little bit of cow manure. See where I'm going at? A little bit of perlite, and a small amount of the native soil goes back, and I mix all this stuff up. And what I'm putting back in that hole is pure gold because the roots can now do this and grow out. They can grow out and they can do their thing. And that's what I want them to do. I don't want them to be struggling to put the soil. Um, uh, I don't want them to uh, be in soil where they can't get oxygen. No, I don't want none of that. I don't want any of that at all. Now, then I get to the um, fertilizer. Now, I make a liquid fertilizer from grass and, and leaves. No exact measurements on it. A uh, 32 gallon container, or if you got a small garden, it's just about five gallon container. Once you had a five gallon container, you put some grass and weeds in there, you let it sit for about three weeks. You put 1% to 10 parts water, and when you do this, you pour it around the plant um, and, and, and you fertilize uh, once a week. Don't forget to fertilize once a week, at least once a week with a liquid fertilizer. Um, and the reason why I say that is because. When you uh, fertilize Monday and then you wait two weeks or three weeks and then you try to fertilize again, the plant's sitting there hungry is on the what? Your plant is sitting there hungry, and now the bugs are starting to move in because the plant is starving. <clears throat> so the bugs are eating the plant now. You don't want that. So what you want to do is go out there and do a feeding once a, once a week, once a week. That's all, once a week. And then uh, if you use a granulated uh, com, excuse me, a granulated uh, it's called a, uh, uh, a, 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 I can't think of it right now. Only thing going through my mind right now is some other thing. Um, what you want to do is get an organic fertilizer. And, it, and it all, um, you know, you just get something to say, root tone is a good one um, for vegetables, root tone for vegetables. And you take that sucker there, dig your uh, small hole next to the plant, five, six inches away from the plant. And you put some in a hole and you cover it up and whatever, and you put some on the other side and cover it up. And 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 once you do this, now you have a continuous uh, feeding cycle where it's going to continue to feed all all that. Thank you is for you. Lord. Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you. I try. I try. And I want people to be successful when they garden. But I see. I see. Sometimes. Uh, they make the same mistake year in and year out, year in and year out, because so, somebody's not telling the truth when they come on these lines. They tell you how to grow stuff. They're not telling you the truth because you look at their garden and they're not growing anything. And you look at um, uh, they might every once in a while. It's like catching fish. It's like catching fish. You get that twenty pound in one day, but you don't catch twenty pounds every day. You go to fishing, and every year you don't grow a sixty-five uh, pound uh, piece of squash every year you have to but 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 your knowledge base can set you up to do much better than say for instance your neighbor you, you just will do better if you know what you're doing with that soil of yours <clears throat> go in knowing that your soil is pretty much kind of crappy okay your soil is pretty crappy and you want to make certain that you put everything in that soil that's needed 
to to make your uh your your garden success. But always know your soul is not perfect. It's just not. Um, and that's why each year you grow. If you put a tomato plant in, you get a few tomatoes off of it. You're happy. But there are people that can take that same tomato plant and maybe get 40 tomatoes on that same plant, or even more big, healthy tomatoes because of what they're doing. And they already know what they're doing. <clears throat> it's not um, it's not guesswork in there. They know they're going to put uh, 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 Epsom salt in tomatoes, peppers. They know that. They're going to put that down in some of their, uh, uh, the process of planting and they're going to do that once a month. They're going to do that once every three weeks. They know this. You might not know that, and you don't do that. And your neighbor's tomatoes are sweeter and bigger, and then he's he or she is producing more of them, all because they're using something from the god tag on our kitchen called Epsom salt, and you don't know about it. Some people use uh, baking uh, soda. I mean, uh, you know what you use in your refrigerator? What is it? What is it? Almond ham or what? Baking powder? Is it baking powder or baking soda? It's baking powder, I think it is. So they're using these things, and these things are chemical. And they're using them because, uh, 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 that's all it is. It's knowledge. It's, it's knowledge. And that's all it is. It's knowledge. I think I got that. I think I said that quite well. Plants are living things. You check on your plant daily. You keep the weeds away from your plant. You keep pulling, 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 pulling. Don't never let the weeds get a big jump on you. You just got to do it. You don't want to do it. You hate doing it. You despise doing it, but every day if you go out there and weed and take those weeds and lay them down sideways, leave them on the ground, and they will keep feeding that, that earth. Everything you need for your garden is pretty much there. Everything you need. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Supreme Family Garden. Yeah, but uh, keep in mind, folks. Um, your your plants are what you put into them. Eggshells, I hear people say that, that's great. Banana peels, great. Add that stuff. It's all just, uh, um, you know, oh. ah, that's it, soda. Thank you, baking soda. Thank you. <clears throat> that stuff is valuable. Um, wood ash from your, uh, your fireplace. Uh, I used to throw I used to throw away forty pound bags of it, and it would get up to forty pounds after two years. I would throw around a forty pound bag. Didn't know I was throwing out something that some people go into the store and buy wood ash, buy it so they can use it on their their, their fruit tree, so that the fruit is sweeter. Come on now, it produces more blossoms to produce more fruit. Potassium. And, and so it, it comes free. It's free. It's a byproduct of using a wood stove. And I just love, man, I just, look, folks, um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. It's enough of it. And every guy that watches the shows when they, when they come on, you know, they start smiling or they're not smiling. They say, hello, I'm going to show you how to grow big potatoes. And I'm looking at this going, okay, let's see what he's talking about. And immediately you see he's digging in the ground. He's not saying nothing about that hole. He's digging how big it is, how deep it is. He's just digging in the ground. <clears throat> then he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to till the rest of my garden up and get back to it next week. And merely when he said he's tilling, you should say, uh-oh, this guy is doing it the way he did back in the day where they was ripping soil up and tearing it up and it was just getting worse each year. Then they would sell that farm and go move off and buy another farm somewhere else because they done ripped and tore the soil up. Or the mono uh, crops they keep producing, I mean, excuse me, growing the exact same crop every year. That'll kill soil. 
Um, so uh, people aren't gardening or farming the way they, they used to, to garden. If they want to say profitable today, if they want to say profitable today, they have to know that they can't be tilling the ground. They know how to leave the, uh, when they do corn, they just strip off the corn, they leave all what they call the trash right there in, in the fields, which is all the stalks and stuff, because that's nothing but fertilizer. They didn't do that before. They used, to, they used to till the hell out of that ground. Just kept tilling it. And then it would dump a, a bunch of man-made chemicals on the ground, and the soil was getting worse and worse and worse each year. And when they looked to start seeing, they were losing a massive amount of dollars doing this, that this uh, process is no longer sustainable. That they, na they neighbor down the road, that down the road is producing more corn, spending less money doing it, and saving the environment by not operating these tractors and tearing up the soil uh, 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 all, all, all week long. They don't have to do that. They put their stuff in the ground, they plant it right in there with that trash they left. And, and I call it trash, for lack of a better word. But all it is is all the debris from all other corn from last year. And it's nothing but fertilizer. And then they're using natural fertilizer. They have manures that they're using, um, which is, um, hell, they even using human manure in some of these, uh, in some of these farms. Mind you, they won't tell you which one, but they're using human manure because they found out that it was real cheap to buy and it is a waste material that can be uh, utilized in a way that will help them to turn a profit. Absolutely. I like what you said there. <clears throat> it's the same thing I've been saying all, all for the last uh, 32 minutes. As you keep adding organic matter in, the soil will improve. The soil will get better and better each year. And the less you can dig in it, the less you can turn it with, with tillers and stuff, the better off you're going to be. You are leaving it intact for the, for the biology to do well. And the biology is what eats up the organic matter, swallows it in, it rolls through the digestive tract, it's excreted out as a fertilizer, perfectly balanced for your plants, trees, uh, shrubs, whatever. And once that takes place, guess what? The food is there for your trees and plants. But because, I mean, plants don't eat uh, hard, granulated, uh, uh, food. It eats liquid. And when these animals live in the soil, die in the soil, eat each other, uh, and produce offspring, all this activity is what your plant eats. Is what your plant eats. And when that takes place, your plant grows. So having your soil loaded with bacteria and, and, and biology is what makes your soil successful. That's it, folks. It is not complex. Don't ever again in life let nobody tell you anything complex about soil because it is not true. You don't need the, all these magical chemicals and, and, and people telling you I'm the king of soil and people telling you I'm the godfather of, of biology in the soil and all that stuff because it's all crap. They're using these marketing tools to sell you some crap. And if you want to be dirt cheap about it, you could actually say, hell, I, I'm, I'm going to go to the market and get me some, some fish this year and try that. I'll get me two five-gallon buckets with two lids on it and get the uh, pickup truck and go in the store, put them in a cart and say to the, uh, the man at the food market, uh, fish market, say, listen, could you fill these up with fish heads and guts or whatever, whatever you have, whatever you have. I'm going to give you a little tip. Don't worry about it. 
uh, and he filled it up, or she filled it up, and, and, and you, you know, and they throwing that stuff away. Or, or excuse me, it's going somewhere to be repurposed, hopefully. But you get it, because they don't want it. It's just fish guts, it's fish heads. You go there on a Friday or Saturday when it's, you know, when it's coming out of fish, you bring that stuff home, you pre-dig your holes, you put that, that fish in there, put some lime on top of that, that fish, Put about an inch or two uh, of soil on top of it. Set your plant on top of that. You just got your fertilizer for free. You gave a little tip for five dollars, baby. You might might have got about forty, fifty dollars worth of worth of fertilizer from the guy. Great idea with the uh, shrimp shells and crab shells. Just always a good idea to cover the scraps with leaves or something each time you add it. Anything, because I see what you got here, and you did you did good here, I like what you got here, you said shrimp shells and, and, and crab shells and all that stuff. Anything that was once alive, anything, anything that was once alive, whether it be shells and eggshells, or banana peels, apple cores, but, uh, 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 watermelon rhymes, um, uh, pos uh, partially, um, excuse me, not partially, but uh, pasta, um, uh, which is organic. Uh, anything, anything can be used. Uh, absolutely, thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely anything can be used as fertilizer. What they have done, the, 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 the marketing machine has found a way to keep giving us false information. So we keep going to the box stores. The box stores, they put these pretty, pretty pictures on the packaging. Beautiful, big tomatoes, cucumbers, apples, peaches. And you see that pack, you go, I want to grow something like that. You can grow something like that. They were growing fruits and uh, like that before these box stores ever came about. They were growing them. They, they, it just didn't just start. And those farmers knew that they used manures, which is cattle, sheep, goat, you know. And in some countries, they, like I said, they use human feces and human urine. What, I mean, a urea is nothing but urine. So this is, is very important to know that you don't need to go buy a shiny little package to, to produce that, but you got to understand what your soil needs and understand the plant that you're putting in the ground. This is a man made plant, it has weak roots, and it is it, because it, it, you, if you want to test what I'm saying here, do this. <clears throat> Excuse me, you take a, a plant seedling out of a cup, and if you just feel the roots, just feel how soft and gentle they are. Now, pull a weed out of the ground and feel that root. It's coarse, it's kind of woody-like. It, it, it's designed for that area. Purposely designed for that area. And that's where that is. So, folks, I don't want to talk your ear off anymore. Uh, I get going and I, you know, I just, I just get carried away. And for that, I apologize. But I don't apologize for trying to share the knowledge. So sometimes I can go on and on and on. But, uh, I just, I just, I just love this because I have plants. Uh, I started uh, a few days ago. They will be big, huge plants before even before time even, uh, before spring even comes, before summer even get here. They're gonna be big plants. Um, I have everything. Uh, I started everything uh, on the twenty second. I want to say I have uh, I have okra growing in the house. I have I have. Uh, Watermelon seeds, I uh, started cooking, I'm a, I'm a, what they call them things, uh, cantaloupe, uh, you name it. I have a whole list of things that are already growing. And, and so that's what I'm doing. Which is everything that you need to grow. Yes, nature is everything. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody put something in here that kind of made my ear go, uh-oh, wait a minute. 
I say, yeah, I'm not using human manure. Just can't get with that yet. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you sound like me. That's how I, I say that, that. You sound like me. I say weed killer. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is only interesting. I say weed killer. Yeah, weed killers are not needed for any reason at all, period. You can use organic methods of controlling weeds. I mean, you can, you know, like vinegar and you got the uh, uh, large amounts of baking powder, baking soda, you know, you could use that stuff. Uh, let's see there. I said, is there only someone wanting to weed good with the yard? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to talk a lot about weeds and stuff. And what I do is I use them as fertilizer. I don't say anything. I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing to my neighbors. I use those suckers as, as fertilizer. I go back there. I uh, mow everything down. And uh, once I mow everything down, I leave everything right there where it is. And then it creates this beautiful brown mulch right on the ground. And I just leave it there. Now, during the gardening season where I have plants on the ground, all I do is walk around with the trimmer and hit everything. I, but I have big, bold weeds, like, like vines and stuff. And so the trick to them is to keep at them. So they never get a foothold of control and everything. Because they'll climb all up trees, they'll climb all up my grapevines and everything and, and try to dominate that yard. All you need to do is give them about two to three weeks or more, and they'll control the whole program. Oh, thank you very much. You too kind. You too kind. If you don't mind me just rambling on uh, because she enjoys the information. Uh, I, I live and breathe this stuff. That's what I do. I love it. I love it. Um, so, so the 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 weeds are just organic matter. I cut them down. Uh, at the beginning of the year comes in. I got my thirty-two gallon receptacle out there. Some people call it a trash can. Uh, I put some. Uh, weed to the uh, bottom of it i cut the grass i put those in there with it i cover it over with the, with the lid i fill it up with uh about a quarter of the way with a uh, rain water uh sometimes you'll get all these little gnats uh, little little flies in there leave them in there that's living matter that will feed your plant oh my goodness it's just so beautiful they go in there and if you think of it that's that way of saying say, Hey, I'm going to go ahead and kill myself so you can feed me plants. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Because I'm going to definitely use it for um, uh, feeding my plants. So, and then you take the, the, the tea that you're creating there, and you do one part, this is a gallon jug, one part of the, the liquid, and then 10 parts of the rainwater. And that will make your plants jump out of the ground, folks, because I've done it too many times. I mean, don't make your plants grow big and bold. Your plants be talking smack to you. That's how strong they'll be. So, you don't need to spend a ton of money to to uh, to, to produce a beautiful garden. That's that's the one key. Take care of the soil. Go out and visit the garden at least once a day if you have the time. Once a day, look around, pull weeds back. Um, Look at your plants. Uh, if you need to prune anything, because sometimes if you let a, a, a tomato plant just be going up, 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 it'll put all its energy in growing up. And you clip that tip off and then get it to, to producing uh, more blossoms and fruit, then you'll do better that way as well once you get it to uh, the height that it needs. Some people put their uh, vines and, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, they put their uh, tomato plants on little trellises and, and sticks and things like that. I don't do that. I let it just run. Um, it takes up more space, but I have this space. Um, uh, planting in clay soil, like I said, dig your hole, look at it. If you have to give a measurement take, bring it out, see if it's six inches deep, see if it's eight inches deep. Uh, oh, thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you. I got seven of them. And I, I meant to say this earlier, folks. Uh, I got one of the highest views this time around 17 people were in this room they're not here now but they were in here um i don't get a lot of views I, I and i try to figure that out i have the knowledge base uh to 
to go on and give out the information, but not a lot of people visit my page. I'm doing something incorrect where I'm not getting out to people, but uh, I'll keep working on that. Um, I have my, uh, what do we call this here? We got my kiwi plants. They are doing quite well. Uh, the kiwi plants are doing quite well. I mean, they're, 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 they've got roots on them. But, but why are the roots taking so long to actually come out and do what they got to do? Um, but I changed the water when the water looks murky and dirty. I changed it because I don't need any issues from being lazy and not changing the water. Weeds are good uh, chicken food. Oh, okay. Weeds are good chicken food. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. Absolutely, I believe that. Um, I see. But but when I use my weeds, I love them because they're free. And then they got the audacity. Weeds have the audacity to keep coming back. Then you got different variety of weeds where they just grow big and bold. I like to take those and rip them from the ground. And when I pull them from the ground, um, uh, I'll just lay it down on the ground and watch it go into the ground over a period of time, of course. And um, and so so uh, the, the fertilizer companies don't want somebody like me on online telling people that they could use uh, uh, weeds as fertilizer. They don't want me doing that. They don't want me saying... Uh, Go to the fish market and get some fish heads and fish guts and put them in a hole. They don't want me doing that because if too many people are talking about that sort of thing online, like we are right now at this moment. They know that if people go in that direction, they're going to lose dollars. It's going to translate into losing dollars. Because the old farmers back in the day did one thing incorrectly. One thing incorrectly, well, actually two. Two things they did incorrectly. One was they till. You know, you would walk behind them, plow, they plow on the ground. They, they were tearing the ground up. They were tearing the ground up is what they were doing. Not a good thing to do, but that's what they knew back then. Another thing they did, which was not good, which was um, not just tilling the ground. They used horrible chemicals to keep the bugs off of their plants. They used horrible chemicals. And these chemicals were killing people and still are today. I'm going to bring that to you in a second. These plants were being sprayed with some of the most horrific stuff to keep the weeds off there because they wanted to turn a profit. And they were using these horrible chemicals. Now, one of my reports today said that uh, people are, have concerns about some of the drinks that they have at the local bars, that they have chemicals in them that relate to agriculture. Uh, one word it was used was Roundup. And I remember hearing that, and I said, I got to research this. I got to research this because uh, oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, if, if you're drinking wine and they're using Roundup uh, in some way to control insects and it's wounding up in the wine and we know that Roundup is a poison and you're consuming it if that is the case and you're consuming it not a good deal beer is made from a plant and if you're drinking it and it's being treated allegedly being treated it's not good that is not good that is not good at all that is not good oh hello how you doing it's a permaculture gardener my permaculture gardener Look at that. It's, it's, it's a great thing to see people that come into the room and he's uh, got this. It looks like a big billboard he has when he came in. Ah, uh, boy, I tell you, uh, it's, some people feel a really great. I uh, agree with you. A million percent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I agree with me a million percent. Uh, but, but you see, we basically are animals just like any other animal. 
we, we grow food because we need to stay alive. And some people grow food to turn profit, <coughs> to turn profit. Nobody wants you growing food. Nobody, nobody, especially the uh, the food chain. They don't want you growing food. You spend less time going to the market. Nobody needs you doing that. You don't need to be taking money out of their pockets. That's why they look at it. They don't need you doing that. They need you to just keep going to the market, get your grapes from some part of the world, your, your cherries from some part of the world. You have no idea how they grow it or what they do to it. And they ship it all over here. And you're supposed to go, oh, okay, someone's checking it and make it certain that this is absolutely safe. With the level of knowledge that we have about our plants today, folks, I'm telling you this, you can do almost anything to these plants. You got plants that bugs won't even eat. And I don't want no plant that a bug won't touch. And, and, and I have, right now, uh, uh, I have people uh, that I see on a daily basis that are saying to me, please, please, could you bring me some food when you start growing your, your, your garden with you? And I'm thinking, wow, they want to eat. Uh, as opposed to going to the grocery store. They're willing to uh, come to me for the food. And uh, I'm going, wow. Wow. And, 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 I, and I try, and, and some people are just not going to garden. I mean, they just won't do it. I mean, I, I talk to people. Uh, one gentleman said to me, he said, I, I don't have any way to grow anything. I live in an apartment. I said, you have a balcony. He said, yeah. I said, let me show you something. Let's step out here on this balcony. And I showed him how the sun was hitting everything out there on the wall. I said, get some five-gallon buckets. Get some three-gallon buckets. And go to this, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, restaurants where they get the order of a five-gallon bucket of some kind of marinara sauce or whatever. And you get those buckets, and they'll give them to you. They trying to get rid of them. They trash them. Go to the um, what's the other thing? Um, go to the um, the coffee houses and get the uh, spent grounds. Get them. Get them. Put them in a big plastic bag, a heavy duty plastic bag. Bring them home. And use that in your compost pile. That's all free. The fish heads, that's all free. And uh, on that note, folks, this has been the morning garden. Keep growing and keep growing your plants. Thank you all for tuning in.